What is up, guys? Uh, and since I hear game three is coming at you on our 30 Days of Go series, it has been really cool um, to do this. And every single game is a new, beautiful, profound, amazing discovery. So let's get started. The opening was good for me. Uh, I played black. I alternate between black and white every game. Uh, I simply took an enclosure. He enclosed there. I took the um, sort of the Moyo point, trying to build the right hand side. He approached. I backed off because if you remember uh, the last game, uh, we talked about keeping Sente in the opening and valuing Sente. So I was thinking about, well, I could pincer, but that would make me lose Sente, and you know, why would I do that? So I would back off, take Sente, uh, and approach his corner. So all is great, all is fine, all is reasonable. He decides to pincer. And this is a big point for both of us. Um, I decided to Tanuki right away, deal with whatever he decided to throw at me because this point, or expanding my influence, just felt like the strategy that I wanted to play for. So in return, he decided to actually strengthen his corner um, below. So I was like, great, I can now just protect my stone. So that's awesome. Uh, we've got standard stuff here. And I went here to try to get a base. He turned, which was big. And now he decided to Atari here. So I neglected to fill in the Atari and came out because I wanted to try to reduce the top. He took, I defended, he threatened to cut me so I had to live, and then I tried to counterattack. And then we kind of get into a giant big fight. But if you look at the state of this group here, this is a weak group, right? It doesn't have eyes shape yet. It kind of could have an eye on the bottom here. Um, if Black gets this move first. Um, otherwise, it's not really an eye. So it's it's definitely a weak group. And the reason it became weak was because I tried to do too much at once. Okay. And trying to do too much at once is a very common problem. Um, for a lot of Go players, and especially for me. Uh, you see your opponent building something, you want to try to take it away. Um, you get sort of very jealous about what they want. Um, but the thing to realize about the Fuseki is you want to emphasize strong groups and strong positions in the Fuseki, so when you invade or reduce, you don't have collateral damage. So this was the correct response here. Simply taking the base and if white decides to extend here, that's what I was scared of. The reason I uh, didn't play here and I tried to get a base was because I was jealous of this area. And then when he turned, I became jealous of this area. So you could see my jealousy in this move and in this move because I was like trying to do everything. I was trying to reduce all of his areas with one group. And the result was a weak group. The best way to do it is just to keep your group strong, turn for even more safety, and even if white solidifies again, now you can go on the attack and attack this stone. And then if you attack that way or this way, the score is actually pretty even. If you look at this corner uh, and this side, compared to white's this side and this side, and then you add this little corner in, so not even counting outside of the corner, the score is even. Black's actually even a little bit ahead. So this result is not bad. And I got so jealous of his top side that I made a weak group to try to damage the left and to damage the top. Um, but the truth of the matter is these are Mii. If white defends the left, you can reduce the top. If white defends the top, you can reduce the left. And the game state is fine. It's an even position. And because I did not make this group a strong group, it ended up 
being attacked and dying later on in the game. So we see how well trying to do everything at once uh, works. Um, even something like this, white decides to try to split because this group already is alive. You don't need to care about defending it and you can put all your efforts in solidifying a base for your group over here. So this group still needs to link up. White can't build anymore because of this stone and this stone. So it's gonna be difficult for white to build while black has a lot of building potential here. So this is a good position for black. And it became a good position if you make your group strong and don't try to do too much at once. So my mistake, again, was neglecting this move and instead trying to reduce, giving white the turn and then letting white take this critical point over here while trying to reduce the top. Because <coughs> if you spend the entire game trying to take away what your opponent has, you won't have anything by the end. And this was shown uh, in the rest of the game as well. As soon as white um, was starting to build something here, after I tried to make my group safe, and we see white sort of swallowing my stone, I immediately jump in and try to invade and live because I see him building something. When I could just be totally content reducing like this. I'm building and taking away at the same time. My area is bigger than his area and that is fine. That is, that is a, that's a good move to do, but I decide to play over aggressive, try to do everything at once, get jealous of what my opponent had and um, try to invade and, and live. So my problems don't seem to be tactical. Uh, my problem seems to be strategic. Uh, I need to change my thinking and my strategy about what do I want to do in the course of a Go game. Not necessarily what moves do I want to play, but like what is my objective and what's important. So this was really great insight because if you play to just take away everything your opponent has, you won't have anything at the end. And this is just true by definition. Because if you want to take away your, what your opponent has, then by definition, that means your opponent has stones invested in an area and you're trying to take those points away, right? Like that's the definition of trying to take away what your opponent has. And if your stone has more, and your opponent has more stones in the area than you, odds are he's going to get a better local result than you. If you keep making subpar local results all over the board because you're playing in places that make you weak and your opponent gets a good local result on the top left, a good local result on the top right, etc you're going to find that all those local results that were bad for you added up and you don't have any points at the end of the game. So think about your local result and sort of think about how you're managing your groups. So if I were to simply play here, this would be an even local result. This group is strong, um, has points, and it has eye space. And then I can use that even local result to start to press for an advantage because I don't have to worry about this anymore. So this, was a, this is a very fundamental um, problem with my game and kind of one of the reasons I feel like I play so hyperactive and I feel like I'm always spread so thin because I'm trying to do way too much. This is a very, this is an even position for black. Black is total, black has nothing to worry about. Black is not behind. Black can play a normal game and this is okay. He doesn't need to worry about giving white an extra move to solidify the top because there's so many more places to play. And black has huge building potential here. So that was a, a really cool lesson that I learned yesterday. And again, these lessons are kind of all in the opening, but I think as I improve my opening and I, and I sort of solidify and internalize these concepts, the mistakes will happen later and later in the game. Right now they're happening pretty early in the game, which I think is a consequence of my poor strategic decision-making in the opening but we've learned some great tools that can help us improve that. So I'm really excited to see what tonight's game holds. Um, but from yesterday, definitely build strong groups before you reduce. Don't try to reduce your opponent in the Fuseki. Build strong groups in the Fuseki, and then worry about reducing later when you have actually built something on your own and you need, and you counted and you figure out what the biggest place is to play. Because again, weak groups come back to haunt you and you keep thinking, oh, it's this weak group isn't that weak, it's fine. And those are like everybody's famous last words. I was like, you know, I know that we're not supposed to make weak group, but I don't think this is that weak. I think it's okay. Um, 
even if it doesn't die, it ended up not being okay because it was used against me. And it was just something I had to worry about. And that's just not good uh, over the course of a Go game. So if you find yourself thinking, let's make a subpar local result because you want to reduce what your opponent has, and this is the early Fuseki, maybe consider what would happen if you just uh, solidified yourself and, you know, took the next big point. Um, the game might not be as losing as you think, because we tend to be pessimistic about our games. Uh, with that, hope you guys learned another really interesting tidbit. Uh, I will be back tomorrow, hopefully, uh, with another video on the next game. So we'll see what we can learn tonight. Um, good luck, and I will see you guys on the grid. Thank you.